It's time for another daily drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones. The topic today, Carolina football, Carolina bowl game football, and plenty of information that UNC put out Monday evening. We actually haven't really had much dialogue, much interaction with UNC since the NC State game. Program kind of went dark, and a lot of us in the media, we've been so fixated covering basketball. And, and we knew eventually this is kind of the way things roll. Season end, regular season ends, no ACC championship game. Uh, coaches have their meetings with the players. They go out on the recruiting trail, and then they begin preparation for the bowl game, which starts Wednesday. The Tar Heels begin practicing for the West Virginia game on Wednesday, and it will be a thinned out group on the practice field for Carolina. Some of the things that we learned Monday evening – much of which we already knew a few things, actually news I didn't know previously, and many of us didn't know previously. And that's kind of what the gist of this uh, drop is about. And with a little bit of perspective on some things right now, as all of you, I'm sure, know already, Cedric Gray, whom we knew was going to go pro enter the draft. He He's played four years, but he could have used a COVID year. But he told us back in October and November that he wasn't going to use a COVID year. He was going to head on. So he formally has entered his name in the NFL draft. He will not play in the bowl game. He told me uh, a few weeks ago, he didn't think he was going to play in the bowl game. And we had that on our boards as well. Drake may, we all knew he was going to enter the NFL draft. He has, it was still a little question whether or not he would play in the Dukes Mayo bowl against West Virginia, but he made it official. He is not playing. So Connor Harrell, will be Carolina's quarterback. Also, uh, we already talked about Tez Walker. Uh, Miles Murphy announced that he's entering his name in the NFL draft. He has also played four years, but he has a COVID year he could use. He's opting not to use it. He's going to enter the draft, but he will play in the bowl game. He's somebody that could use another good game to help his stock a little bit. And Corey Gaynor has exhausted his eligibility. He is also not going to play in the bowl game. Also not playing in the bowl game because of injury. This is a pretty impressive list. And there's some things, uh, some of this news is going to challenge the heels in some areas. For example, John Copenhaver, tight end. He's going to be out with a lower body injury. Bryson Nesbitt, tight end, out with a lower body injury. And remember, Kamari Morales has already entered the portal and committed to Boston College. So, Carolina and every tight end is Julian Randolph was injured this year. I don't believe Julian Randolph is healthy enough to participate. We'll find out more Wednesday when we go over there for some interviews. As it stands, if he's not able to play, they have no scholarship tight ends available. So it might be someone like Deems May or Court Halsey, walk-ons who have been in the program. Uh, May, of course, is a legacy at Carolina. Uh, everybody knows who his dad is. Most people know who his dad is, who also played at Carolina, some other injuries of note, Elijah Huzzy, another starter. He's out with a lower body injury. So he's been out for a while, did not play in the NC State game. Will Hardy is also out as safety. He's played a ton of snaps, but he's also banged up a lot this year. And, and Zach Rice is out. I don't think Zach was going to get on the field a whole lot in the bowl game, uh, depending on what other decisions were made. But he is out with a lower body injury as well. Two guys that have entered the portal that will play are Jefferson and Boaz, who's a quarterback, who, quite frankly, they should just roll him out there at tight end. I remember being at Showtime several years ago, Max Summer, June uh, All-Star Camp, and he was the most impressive guy there, and he was playing tight end. He's a big kid. He was a great athlete in high school. He, he was Dina King's Player of the Year, a phenomenal baseball player, could pitch, a really good football player, a really well-rounded athlete, but he's in the portal, but he will play in the bowl game. Also, DJ Jones, a very recent entry into the portal, someone that I didn't think would hit the portal because I thought that maybe there would be a chance that in the spring, depending on what happens at running back, maybe he moves back over to running back because that room's a little bit thin right now. But DJ, who played 198 snaps this year at the star position on defense, first time in his life he ever played defense, he's graduated, he's in the portal, He'll, he has one more year, he could play somewhere else, but he will play in the bowl game as well. So a lot of stuff to unpack. 
uh, not a ton of surprising stuff, but once it becomes reality and becomes final, it, it's easier, I guess, then to sort of try to give a little perspective to what we now know. There could be some more attrition. There could be some more decisions made about guys that enter the portal and choose not to play in the bowl game, which is in just more than two weeks. In fact, they start practice Wednesday. It's exactly two weeks later that they play December 27th in Charlotte against West Virginia. So if nothing else changes, clearly not having Drake is going to be an issue for this team, but a lot of clubs are not going to be playing with their starting quarterback. So it's a great opportunity for Connor Harrell, someone who has been inconsistent since he arrived at Carolina. When I say inconsistent, it's not in the few snaps that the public gets to see at the end of a game. It's practice. It's, it's, the week to week stacking good weeks on top of one another. It has been a little bit of an issue for him since he arrived, but this past season, right before the Carol, right after the Campbell game, we played a lot against Campbell, did some good things. People saw how fast he is. I asked Mac in the Monday press conference after that two days after that game about Connor and about the consistency. And he said, you know, he's put together a couple of really good weeks in a row. So perhaps the light has gone on for Connor, and we will see the result of that in the bowl game against the Mountaineers. For him, it's a great opportunity to audition himself. For him, it's a great opportunity to get extended reps, get a lot of stuff on film, and if he plays well enough to essentially create a competition with Max Johnson for the starting quarterback job, something that will carry into spring practice and who knows, knowing Mac, it's possible that thing carries in to fall camp next August alone. So this is a great opportunity for Connor Harrell. It's also a great opportunity for some other guys. How about Amari Campbell? He's probably going to play a lot. Sebastian Cheeks is in the portal, and I guess he's not going to play in the game. So it might be Amari Campbell, Caleb Lavely, who's a true freshman who got a couple of reps this year. They're going to be really thin at linebacker in the bowl game, but it's an opportunity for Amari Campbell to play extended, extended snaps, kind of like what Power Eccles got two years ago in the Dukes Mayo Bowl when Jeremiah Gummel was a bit banged up, tried to go and really couldn't, and Power Eccles played the majority of the game, and that really helped springboard him into the following season. So that could be the case for Amari Campbell. Also at center, I'm thinking that Willie Lamp can play center, but I know that they are looking at centers in the portal because Willie's better position is guard, even though he was the Sunbelt Conference Offensive Lineman of the Year in 2022 as a center. So he could play center. That's not an issue. I think he would rather play guard. He told me he prefers playing guard. I think the staff would rather him play guard too because he could be a bit of a mauler there and his ability to get under the pad level of tackles it really can be an asset to what the offensive line does. But uh, I, I don't know yet. We'll find out again Wednesday. So we'll have a lot of stuff on our site that we learn Wednesday. And then we get Mac Brown in a press conference the following Wednesday, which by the way, is also signing day. He'll be bringing in a huge class at receiver. Andre Green's in the portal. He's gone. Doc Chapman's in the portal. He's gone. Tez Walker, NFL draft. He's gone. So J.J. Jones is there. Nate McCollum should be healthy. This is a great opportunity for someone like Chris Culliver, Christian Hamilton, Paul Billups, but in particular Culliver, because Culliver is someone whose name has come up from time to time during the course of the year. In fact, I thought in about the middle of the season that Culliver was going to start getting some reps based on some conversations, based on some stuff that was said publicly by Mac and Chip Lindsay, we kind of thought that because of need after Kobe Pesor went down and then Gavin Blackwell was also out for a while. And then McCollum started going in and out with being banged up. Kind of thought that they would really roll in somebody else, sort of like they did with JJ Jones about midpoint of his true freshman year, but it didn't work out that way. But I think we'll see him now. I would think that there's no way we won't see him. Uh, that somebody needs to get those reps. So it'll be a great opportunity for those three kids to get on the field, get some game reps, get stuff on film, get a real healthy taste of what the game at this level is all about. And for fans, it'll make it interesting to see a lot of new faces. 
Also, without Elijah Huzzy, he was the starting star this year after DeAndre Boykins got hurt. DJ Jones was his backup. So who plays star now? Perhaps it's Caleb Cost, true freshman. He got a lot of work at star in fall camp, got some work during the year, got a couple of snaps in, in like the Campbell game, playing the star. Maybe he gets an opportunity to get on the field and just play 60, 70 snaps. And the value in that obviously goes without saying. It's the same thing I'm saying about the other guys. Gets a chance to taste the game at that level on an every down basis, gets a lot of stuff on film and an opportunity to springboard into the next season. But that's kind of where we're at with this right now. So you're looking at on offense, one of the most high powered offenses in the country. You don't have a quarterback, you don't have any of your tight ends. You're down a few receivers. What you got? Well, you've got Omari and Hampton, but you're also down a couple of backs. I imagine British Brooks plays. It's his final game. Caleb Hood is still there. Petaway and Elijah Green are gone, but they probably weren't going to factor into it anyway. So you might see Carolina line up and run a lot of power stuff. And one of Connor Harrell's strengths is running the ball. So you might be see a little bit more of a ball control approach, which I think will be a precursor into the direction the offense moves into 2024. I talked a little bit about why I think Max Johnson was brought in. And I think game management is part of that. And that will be one of the tasks that Connor Harrell is given. Manage the game. Let's run the ball. Let's keep the defense off the field some and see where it goes from there. So we might actually see a glimpse of what the staff envisions for 2024 in this game. This game could be, in a sense, the beginning of the 20. 24 season with some of the guys auditioning for jobs and maybe with a changed approach as for a changed approach on defense. I don't think you're going to see one. It's going to be more of the same, just maybe guys making plays, or at least they want to see guys make plays. And I know a lot of fans out there are wondering about potential staff changes. If any are made, it's not going to happen until after the bowl game. So you can pump the brakes on that for a couple of weeks. Anyway, this is kind of an exciting time. I love new toys. I love new things because it gives me stuff to write about that I haven't written about in the past and stuff to talk about that I haven't talked about in the past, like a lot of Connor Harrell, like whoever the heck's going to play tight end. Like maybe we'll focus a lot on Amari Campbell here in the next couple of weeks as he gets an opportunity perhaps to show what he can do. So it's, it's a cool thing. As much as I'm not sure that I think bowl games really should happen anymore, this these scenarios are why bowl games are good because guys get a chance to play and really begin their next season. So let me know what you guys think. Who are you excited about seeing that you haven't really seen much of? Assuming the names I've thrown your way are the guys that probably do step into some of these roles. Who do you want to see most? Who excites you? Who intrigues you? The most and don't say Connor Harrell. Give me the other ones because everyone's going to say quarterback because it's quarterback. Give me some of the other guys or who did I leave out? Who do you think might get an opportunity to step into one of these roles that I left out and you're looking forward to seeing as well? Make sure you go over to our site, tarheelillustrate.com. It's just $8.33 a month. You will have missed a ton of stuff the last couple of weeks if you haven't been on. If you didn't take advantage of our Black Friday special, shame on you. It was just like $2.12 a month or something like that. Now it's $8.33 a month for a one-year subscription. And keep in mind, you can actually buy a gift for one of your Carolina family friends or a buddy or, or a loved one, whoever, someone that's a big-time Carolina fan, just $8.33 a month, and they can be a Tar Heel insider too. Make sure you go ahead and like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we upload. And I... I'm AJ, and I will see you tomorrow.